They're a form of escapism. I need to obsess to distract me from crushing emptiness and the hopelessness of life. That's like me too. <laughs> It's Jessica, and welcome back to Butterfly Soup. So we're going to continue on with this little baseball game that we have going on. And it, uh, it's pretty much confirmed Min pretty much became the catcher she- or the Thor she always wanted to be in order to have Dia be the only one to pitch it. Because, you know, they're OTP forever. Alright, let's continue. Once Dia has strapped on all of their gear, Min throws it again. Dia caught it. What? She sounds like a fox falling off the stage in Super Smash Bros. Melee. I knew it. Krista was making it up. I'm never believing your lies again. You weren't lying. Dia just caught it again. Hey, see? That's the only thing. They, these two are the only ones who can play together. See? Dia is amazing. Okay, that has to be a fluke. Calm down. You're the one who needs to calm down. They managed to relieve another hitter together. Akasha is up next. On her way to the plate, she tries to do the splits, fails, and sheepishly crawls back to her feet. That was my plan all along! I'm playing four-dimensional chess! <laughs> God, I can't stand her! I want to push her off a cliff! But a shallow one, so she doesn't get hurt. Just to scare her. Does she like Akasha? I'm something I'm a little bit gay here, because you know... Um, <laughs> Min winds up and throws another knuckler. It veers wildly up to the sky. Without hesitation, Dia rises out of her crouch and, and gloves it. What? That would have been a ball, but still. Is it really surprising? Dia's always been good at sports. I'm more shocked if she failed. No, but you don't understand. This goes beyond good at sports. It's literally impossible. Akasha swings and misses for the third time. She struck out. Uh, that, per that was performance art. You can't make these excuses every time you mess up! <laughs> Once Dia and Min have relieved to the entire roster, Liz claps her hands together to gather their attention. Alright everyone, let's end the meeting for today. What? Already? Yeah, it's been like two hours. Huh? They say time flies when you're having fun. But I wasn't having fun! I... I must have been so miserable that my mind wiped parts of my memory out! Once again, Noelle doesn't know how to f have fun, and I think this is the first time she actually, you know, ha hung out with her friends, rather than just doing schoolwork or homework or anything like that. Let's head back inside. Dia, I'll race you! <laughs> Dia and Min tear off the top speed. After a beat, the others begin to heading up uphill as well, at deliberately more reasonable pace. I haven't seen Dia this happy since the time the vending machine malfunctioned and gave her two Kit Kat bars instead of one. Noelle suddenly tries to regulate her breathing rate so no one knows she's getting winded walking uphill. Oh, poor girl. <laughs> hey, Noelle. Uh, thanks for putting up with this today. Sorry we're sort of forced you to play. It wasn't the worst. I may find myself to forgive you someday. Yeah, you did good. I did terrible. Okay, you did terrible, but you tried your best, and that's what matters. Yes, that is. That's what all it matters, especially considering Noelle doesn't, you know, do sports. So, I'm proud of her. <laughs> it's not like everyone can be Dia. Don't worry so much and just have fun. It's not a competition. Right. No Carissa pats Noelle on the head. Don't touch me! Really appreciate you pitching in. Yuck! <laughs> Noelle tries to escape. She takes one step, slips on the muddy grass, and falls on her butt. Noelle! What are you doing, Noelle? Are you trying to win America's Funniest Home Video? Ah! Chris, are you pull her up? My hands are full. No! Noelle scrambles to her feet and follows the others up the bank as quickly as she can. Not very quickly. Hey, wait! Noelle! They're being nice to me to trick me into joining the club! I won't fall for it. Unlike some people, I have control over my emotions. I'll just ignore her. Fuck! What was that? Min is picking herself off the ground. There is a min-shaped dust imprint on the door now. Are you okay? The door was locked! You probably should have checked it before ramming straight into it! Don't tell me what to do! Looks like we'll have to wait for Chris and Liz to unlock it. Min pulls a lighter out of her pocket and lights a cigarette. Ah, of course she's smoking a cigarette! Are you serious?! That's illegal! What the goddamn hell is your damage?! I can't do anything without you calling it illegal! Because it is illegal! Even if it wasn't, what kind of idiot are you? Didn't you learn about the health effects of tobacco in school? 
It's just a bunch of statistics. Plenty of people smoke and don't die. What? You think you're better than the laws of probability? Yeah, I am. Go ahead and remove yourself from the gene pool then. I don't care. Hey, Min, can I try smoking it? What? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? Come on, aren't you curious? It's not like I'll get addicted to just one, from one smoke. Um... Min holds out the cigarette for Akarsha. Here. Don't mind if I do. No! Noelle bats the cigarette out of Akarsha's hand. It lands on some dry pine needles and bursts into flames. Oh, no! Ah! <laughs> Frenchman, what have you done? Shut up! Smokey the bear is crying right now. Only you can prevent forest fires. Well, shit. What do we do now? Pee on it! Are you stupid? Stop, drop, and roll! You don't do that unless you're already on fire! Head on, apply direct to the forehead. This isn't helping! Silence falls over the group as they hear approaching footsteps on the other side of the wooden divider. It sounds like Chris and Liz are slowly getting closer to the locker room. Hey, what are you guys screaming about? Nothing's wrong, so don't come in here! Is everything okay? Everything's fine! Where's the nearest fire extinguisher? The footsteps pause for a brief stunned moment before resuming with a dramatically increased speed and urgency. Crap, we need to fix this! We should have smothered it! Someone use their jacket! What if the jacket gets burned? This is my favorite jacket, ma'am! Same. Okay, who likes their jacket the least? Me. <laughs> Dia strips off her hoodie. Min watches her extreme interest, but looks incredibly disappointed when she sees Dia is wearing a shirt underneath. Min, your gay is showing! <laughs> Akasha throws the jacket over the fire and stomps on it. Okay, I think we extinguish it. Teamwork! Dia picks up her jacket and shakes it out. Other than the mud prints from Akasha's flip-flops, it looks no worse for wear. I can't believe Frenchman snapped and tried to commit arson! That's not what happened! Krissa and Liz are here. What's that burnt smell? Who did it? It was... Jerry. We're inventing a person now? Who the hell is Jerry? He's a guy, black hair. Right, we saw him, he did it! Dia nods helpfully. <laughs> oh, these girls. What a day! I somehow ended up playing baseball, got patted by some random upperclassmen, and then interrogated over arson. They questioned all of us separately, and our accounts of Jerry fell apart. In the end, they made us do push-ups as punishment. I'm exhausted. I'm home. What did you get on the math test? An A. A? Why not A+. Plus? Oh my god. Dude, I feel so bad for Noble. Th th this mentality of, like, you have to get 100% in school, or, or you're gonna fail in life. That's not how it works. I really wish, like... The, the mentality of Asian parents, I know it's not just Asian parents, just other parents as well, um, regardless of background and whatever, but I wish parents in general would stop thinking like, your child gets 100%, they're gonna succeed in life, because that doesn't always work out. And that shouldn't be, that's not really how you learn, because you just force it upon them, right? And it's not good for them overall, it just, you just make your kids crazy. Noelle's mom is cutting a column out of the Chinese newspaper. Look at this article. A CEO sold his company for over a billion dollars and donated 200 million to the UC Berkeley. There's a building in Berkeley and named after him now. He's American-born Chinese, just like you. If you can do it, why can't you? I'm putting this on your wall to inspire you. She gets up and takes it to Noelle's bedroom, next to the shelf gleaming with Noelle's math competition trophies. Check your computer. I see she still has a snake. That's nice. Dude, what the fuck did I miss in elementary school? Oh yeah, this is, uh, Akarsha, Yaoi Same. <laughs> According to Min, basically she's your childhood arch nemesis. And Dia's ex? Arch nemesis is accurate, but she's not Dia's ex. That's ridiculous. Okay, she didn't use those exact words, but pretty much? That's simply impossible. They're both girls. Oh, she doesn't know. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they're still young. It's, it's understandable if they don't understand, like, different sexualities. But also, again, playing off the Asian mentality, if you come from an Asian background, nobody really talks about lesbian or gay or any type of different sexuality other than you're straight. So? What do you mean, so? I can't believe you're an arch nemesis. I didn't even know people had those in real life. How's, uh, how's this going to work? I don't understand what you're asking. What are you going to do about men? Nothing. She doesn't pose me any threat. Dia made her promise not to hurt me before, so she's strictly limited into insulting and threatening me. I'll bark no bite, so to speak. I'm probably actually the safest person in the school, as the only one with this kind of immunity. I'll just try my best to avoid her. 
what? She's friends with both Dia and me now. You gotta figure out how you're gonna deal with her sooner or later. No, I don't. My strategy has worked flawlessly all the way through elementary school. There's no reason to change it now. Your strategy? The maybe if I ignore her, the problem will go away strategy? I don't have a choice! You don't understand how stupid she really is! She's not just pretending to be dumb like you! She's dumb for real. She w she once carved my name into a desk and couldn't figure out how they caught her. Wait, hold up. Wait, I got it! Join the baseball club! Why? How does that solve anything? It doesn't. But trust me, it always works in the movies. Whenever two characters hate each other, if they end up in a situation where they're forced to work together, they come out as BFFs. More realistically, they go in as enemies or worse enemies. No, I'm calling it right now. We're going to miraculously set our differences aside and work as a team. Also, we win by one. Come on, Frenchman. One of us. One of us. No! Yes! Leave the Eiffel Tower behind! Stop telling everyone I live inside the Eiffel Tower! Make your dreams into reality. This isn't my dream! Then what is? Doesn't it bother you that everyone else our age gets to have fun? That's true. It should bother her, but she's conditioned to be like, it's not my problem, I'm just doing well in school. Like, bruh, where's my complicated relationship drama? Where's my reckless teen adventures? Don't you feel like you're missing out sitting at home alone all the time? No, because it'll pay off in the future. But your youth is irreplaceable. Noelle was invited to the baseball club group chat. I'll just take a quick look, then quit. That's it. Join the chat! <laughs> She's gonna join. Noelle has entered the chat room. <gasps> Dia's picture! <laughs> Hello. What the fuck? Why are you here? What are you gonna do? Use the parable to calculate how to throw a ball? Parabola. Shut the fuck out. <laughs> you long green bean. Green bean? Shut the fuck out! You stupid overachieving Asian fob loser stereotype. Overachieving. Big words for someone who will be attending community college and working at McDonald's. Oh no! She's taking after the stereotypes of her parents! Noelle, no! Guys, come on! Don't be like this! Become BFFs! Look how much you'll have in common! Asian! Full of anger! You both like Dia! Let's all sing the Barney song! I love you, you love me, we're a happy family! Man has changed the group chat uh, name to fuck you, Noelle. <laughs> I don't like this group chat name! Suck it. Noelle has changed the group chat to baseball club. Man has changed it to fuck you, Noelle. Stop this! Noelle has changed it to baseball club. Man has changed it to fuck you, Noelle. <laughs> guys, guys, this is so immature. How about a compromise? What sort of compromise? Yahweh Sammy has changed the group to baseball club. Thank you. What the fuck? How is this compromise? I didn't get anything. Yahweh Sam has changed the name to Noel Fuck You Fuck Noel Fucker 69. <laughs> nice. I take this back. This is unacceptable. Change it back. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain something of equal value must be lost. This is the alchemy first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed in the world as one and only truth. I hate you! Starts crying. I'm crying, you made me cry. You don't get to change it. I'm not going to be your partner for school projects anymore. The motherfucker has changed your name to Yahweh Same. Darn. It was a good while it lasted. I wonder if there's anything else left to figure out about baseball. Uh, then no one else has yet. Like other strategies that make us statistically more like likely to win? Or weird other loopholes. Can we release multiple balls into the air and confuse the opponents? I think that would just confuse us too. What about advantages for batting? What if instead of bats we brought those yaoi paddles? <laughs> no! Akarsha! <laughs> what the fuck's a yaoi paddle? Google it. In any case, they have rules about what kind of bats you can use. Please, nobody please, nobody Google yaoi paddle, thank you. Dude, this just gave me a great idea. I'm Albert Einstrong. Yeah, we say we need to change their Albert Einstrong. <laughs> was... was that your idea? No, that's not it. It was my... it was just my reward for being a genius. If you break the bat in half and dual wield one half in each hand. I don't think there would be any advantage to doing this! We gotta try to know for sure, for science. There's a rule about damaged bats. If they break, they'd be removed from the play without penalty. 
No! My plan is crumbling to pieces! Your plan was in pieces from the start. Rude! My backup plan is, we could secretly replace Dia's bones with synthetic ones. I don't like this plan. What about nanomachines? I don't want nanomachines. Nanomachines aren't even at the level where they can be used yet! It's a theoretical field! What? I thought they made nano cars already. With wheels and everything. Just a moment, I'm googling it. I don't want nano cars. The wiki page says that the nano cars don't even have motors. They have four wheels attached to an empty frame. They don't do anything. Oh. Then why the hell did they even create them? I don't know. They would be just floating around pointlessly inside of Dia. For our purposes, gene therapy would be more practical. So, uh, it's just like... If you put it in her, it would be like, you know, snake from Metal Gear Solid. It just fucks them up. The technology is already used to treat muscle wasting disorders. We could use it to change Gia's gene expression and increase production of protein to make her stronger. It would be totally undetectable by drug tests. Oh my fucking god. I don't want gene therapy. It'll be like doping with your genes. Gene doping. Has anyone done this yet? I wouldn't know. I'm looking it up, dude. No one has ever done it. There aren't any regulations on it yet. I bet all baseball people don't even know what it is. You could be a gene doping pioneer. You haven't even been here 10 minutes yet and you're already destroying baseball. I don't think this is the way we're supposed to do it. Guys, oh my god. I looked up Cyborg on Wikipedia and I found there's a man. He... What the fuck? Since 2004, British artist Neil Harbison has a cyborg antenna implanted in his head. His antenna was included with it within his 2004 passport photograph, which has been claimed to be confirmed his cyborg status. This is great! They claim to confirm his cyborg status. Bit, mi bit makes him sound so desperate, right? Plus the design is ridiculously unfashionable. You normally expect cybers to look cool and futuristic, but instead... <laughs> This, it's even better when you remember this from 2004. Oh my fucking god. The black and white makes you think this is from a Great Depression or something. But it's actually just some weirdo with a really lame haircut. <laughs> he looks like he's planning to tangle a, a carrot from the string in front of that. Like a donkey. Shut up, I'm losing it. It's only been four years. Not only is he still alive, but he could... But his current appearance is probably relatively unchanged. This man is still out there, existing in the same world we do, looking like we looking like this as we speak. Good. Whenever you feel down about your looks, remember. <laughs> Stop. Why are you smiling? Are you talking to a boy? No boyfriend until college. Maybe I'm gay, mom. <laughs> Noel almost falls out of her chair in shock. I didn't hear you come in! Noel switches off to more academic tab she kept open, but not before her mom sees. You always change the screen when I come in. Where are you hiding? Her mom grabs the mouse and clicks in the incriminating tab. You're wasting time. Do your homework. Her mother scans the names on the screen and jabs a finger at Albert Einstrong. Who's that? That's Akarsha. She's the other smart girl in my grade. The one who almost beat you in the midterm? Yes. Don't forget that everyone is your competition. She's tricking you into thinking she didn't you, she didn't study it when really she does. Every minute you spend doing useless things is a minute she's beating you. She's not tricking me. She, we're friends. Friends? Don't be naive. When she gets into MIT and you don't, you think she'll care? If you were really in trouble, would she do anything to help you? Of course not. When it comes down to it, nobody will look out for you. The only people you can really trust are your family. Oh my god. Once again, all these fucking flashbacks- oh, Jesus Christ, these stereotypes are like really, really hitting me because it just reminds me of like when I was younger. And like, when you get older, I trust me, it's not fucking true. It's really not. <laughs> you don't know anything! Don't talk about my friends like they mean nothing! Don't you know anything about me? What's my worst fear? What's my favorite documentary series? You would know these things if you had to care for me beyond how good I make you look to our relatives. Oh shit! You ungrateful child. The whole reason we came to America is so you could live a better life. We made so many sacrifices for you. Oh my god, I fucking hate that. Don't say that to your kids. Don't. Because, yes, you want your kids to do better than you did. Yeah, you want them to have a better life. But don't fucking guilt trip them by saying, We came here to make a better life for you. We sacrificed everything for you. It's not the kid's fault. Their kid's only reason is there. They're supposed to grow and live to be their own person. They don't live vicariously through you. You know what I mean? They're not your mistake. Because, like, when you guilt trip them like that, 
It's looking like you're saying they're a mistake. And it's their fault all these bad things happen to you when it's not really their fault. They didn't do anything. They're innocent. So please don't say that to your kids. That's not okay. How dare you say we don't care about you? You've been spoiled rotten. You have an attitude problem. Kids these days. When your dad comes home, we're gonna have a long talk about this. Noelle mom closes the tab. She hovers over her shoulder for a few more minutes to verify that Noelle is doing work. Do you have anything better to do? Oh, that's right, you don't. Because you have no friends or hobbies to live vicariously through me. Still looking sour, her mom finally leaves. Upset, Noelle curls up in the bed angrily, hugging her giant snake plushie. Open the chat room again. Noelle has entered the chat room. <laughs> Dia's so happy. Yuck, why did you come back? Are you still deciding whether to join or something? No, I have decided. I'm in. Yay! She's in! Oh, hello! We're in another girl! It's Akarsha's turn! Yay! We get to see Akarsha's point of view. Dia's house. Hey, I'm here! Hello? Dia? Homie? Dia's crawling on her hands and knees in the bushes. What are you doing? Caught him! Dia emerges from the brush with a caterpillar in her hands. It's a fat and striped. Ew! Dia turns to her facer because she's deaf in one ear. When she stands up straight, she actually faces slightly to the right. Don't be rude. We should give him a name. Yowie. Oh my god. Yowite. Miles Tail Edgeworth. <laughs> Let's go with Miles Tails Edgeworth. Miles Tails Edgeworth. What kind of a name is that? It's a character from Ace Attorney games. He. It's hella gay. You should play it. <laughs> You say that like I'd be interested just because it's gay. You're not? Good gay stuff is hard to come by. That is true. That is true. Um, you know, as, as a queer person, I really don't appreciate that there's not a lot of good gay material. It's always stereotypical, you know what I mean? So, that's why I was so happy when I found this game, and it's actually really good. So, I agree with Akarsha. Gay, good gay stuff is hard to come by. Dia scrutinizes Miles' tail's edgeworth as he inches across her palm. You're so interested in these kinds of things. Video games and stuff. They're a form of escapism. I need to obsess to distract me from crushing emptiness and the hopelessness of life. That's like me too. <laughs> Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> Dia scoops the caterpillar into her hands. Did you hear the news? Obama won. Yes, we can. Yeah, but they outlined gay marriage. They did? Prop 8 passed. I thought you we were better than that. You shouldn't be surprised. There were a lot of yellow wearing guys. Don't even have to ask my parents what they voted, I know. But the thing is, it used to be legal. We used to be better. It's not just that the world sucks. The world sucks and it's getting worse, I agree. Obama though. Yes we can. Yes we can. Miles Tails Edgeworth is crawling up Dia's arm now. Gross. That's so shallow, he has a good heart. Don't yellow and black stripes normally mean it's poisonous? Caterpillars are only poisonous if you eat them. It's not dangerous if you're nice. Dia carefully returns the caterpillar to a tree branch. Ready to go? Dia nods. Akarsha? Yeah? Never mind. What the? Did she want to say something about the gay stuff? Because once again, she hasn't talked to me about her crush with Min. We went ahead and got changed. It feels like we're a real team now, wearing the same uniform. We still got some kind of- We still got some time to kill before the meeting starts. Alright, let's talk to Dia first. Whoa! Check out Dia's arms, though! <laughs> Dia's on the bench, resting her head on Min's shoulder. She's showing Min a picture of a seagull on her cell phone. One side of the photo is blurry brown from Dia's thumb, partially obscuring the camera lens. Like how close I got to the seagull! That's pretty close. Okay, let's talk to Min. Min has a textbook in her lap. She's flipping in the new chapter review page. Are you doing homework? That's really seditious of you. I told my parents I'd join the tutoring club. Oh, lol. Funny, so did I. What? What? You need tutoring for? I told them I was the tutor. That's perfect. You can tutor Min then. Match made in heaven. Match made in hell. I don't want her help. Match should just die. Why? It's a discipline full of beautiful and complex patterns. There's absolutely nothing inherently bad or oppressive about it, yet people treat it like it's evil and malicious. Uh. A lot of pure math lacks any kind of practical application and merely exists for the sake of stimulating people's minds and pushing the limits of the medium as far as possible. It's much like a form of art. Can't relate. Shut the fuck up. Dude, let me see it. I'll help you. 
Problem 1. Bill can paint a house in 5 hours and Mary can paint a house in 3 hours. How long will it take for them to paint the house together? 8 hours. 5 plus 3 is 8. <laughs> Are you gonna be okay at this school? Alright, let's talk to Noelle. Noelle is solving a professor's cube. Unlike the regular Rubik's cube, it's 5 by 5 by 5 instead of 3 by 3 by 3. Dia's face lights up when she spots it. I solved one side for you already. Took me two hours. Dia proudly points to the cube. Indeed, one face is solid red. I see. I'm pretty sure that doesn't help at all. Noelle completely obliterates Dia's work in order to solve the cube correctly. Wow, you make it look easy. Did I help? Of course, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, go back to Dia. Life is so hard. Any words of wisdom, Dia? Snowflakes are actually really, really small. Not like you would think from Christmas decorations. Uh, how big do you think they were? Like the size of a plate. Wow, you must have been crazy disappointed when you discovered the truth. Any other advice? You can make Nutella sandwiches and eat them. If you do this three times a day, you'll have three meals for like 150. Thanks. <laughs> would you would you kiss a girl for one million dollars? I guess. I don't have that kind of money though. What? No, I'm saying you get paid. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> Noelle peels a banana and takes a bite out of it. The hell are you doing? Aren't you taking the banana sticker off? Why would I? It comes off with the peel anyway? Taking the sticker off would first be completely pointless. So you can just eat with the sticker still on? Yes? It doesn't have any effect inside the banana! The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you- you're not human! How am I not human?! The locker door creaks open. When Noelle sees Chris and Liz come through, she shifts her hand to wave but almost halfway through the motion. Scowling, she jerks the offering appendage back down, like her hand had gone and betrayed the rest of her body. What? Nothing? Hey guys, we have a few announcements to make. First of all, Minso, you need to resubmit your parental permission for form for the club. And this time, please have a real parental guardian sign it. Don't know what you're talking about. She forged it? How can you tell? The signature was just the word mom in cursive. <laughs> oh no. Fuck. Min is running away. Krista gets up and chases after her. There's nowhere to run, you dumb kid. It sounds like an awful lot like Min ran to the door again. Everyone's form looks fine, though. So good job, guys. If you forged it too, I couldn't tell. Phew. <laughs> Chris says return, dragging that defeated Min behind her. Next up, we're playing against the actual team today. What? Who? We invited the team at Niles over. They should be here soon. Are we gonna be okay? Our team is made up of four baseball players, two nerds, and three weebs. <laughs> what? Did you- Wait, did you count me as a nerd? I'm a hybrid. I'm a weeb, too. Guys, we'll be fine. Maybe. The maybe was too honest. <laughs> Don't worry, it's seriously super casual. They aren't bringing their coaches or anything. It's just the nine of them dividing over the cars. Just relax and have fun. This isn't really important. Mascot, it's killer whales. What's our team name? Do we get a mascot too? Read your damn shirts, the monarchs. That's so bland. We're not really an official school team, so we can make our names of ourselves. Ooh, any suggestions? Bagels. The way you think is so damn cute. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Bagels is simple, so I kind of like it. Yeah, I'd honestly be okay if it ended up being that. Any other suggestions? We should be something stronger than killer whales to assess our dominance. Monarchs are already more powerful than killer whales, though. Humans keep killer whales in captivity. But if it was like 1v1, a killer whale would tear a guy to shreds. We should be something bigger and more dangerous. Like what? Global warming? Oh my god, that's actually a hilarious name. No matter who's we're up against, they're pretty much just automatically lose. The Tigers versus Global Warming. Who do you think is gonna win? Our motto can be, underestimate us and the world will be destroyed. That's not very a positive motto. <laughs> I still kind of impressed when Will came up with that. Kind of a name did you think I would come up with? I don't know. Something nerdy that you thought sounded cool but it was actually really cringy? Like the algorithms. Yuck. I feel like throwing up. Shut up! I never suggested that! I don't like global warming. It's not threatening enough. How is it not threatening enough? It's irreversible and will devastate generations to come. But it's not a thing. Like a real thing. Are you serious? You don't believe in global warming? She means it's like an abstract concept. Yeah! We should be something that sounds like we could rip our enemies from limb to limb. Like Death Machine. Are we forming a heavy metal band? 
Death Bagels. <laughs> That's better, I think. Death Bagels is dramatically cuter, but Min is too pleased that Dia combined their suggestions to complain. Wait, I just thought of a name too. Semes. No! <laughs> what? What is that? In Yahweh, the Semi is the dominant guy in the couple. <laughs> what is Yahweh? You don't want to know. Usually only teen girls who like anime knows what it means, so maybe that's good. Most normal people would totally be oblivious. Yeah, the only reason Noelle knows is because I corrupted her. Let me reiterate, this is a bad idea. We're going to have to make up a fake definition when our parents ask what it means. Worth. How is it worth it? We'll set this a fair way, which is a vote. Everyone, write down your vote on a piece of paper. Akarsha votes for... Bagels, chicken nuggets, global warming, death bagel. Death bagel is really cute. I, li I like Dia's suggestion, but we gotta go with semis, okay? It's too late. <laughs> Chris Natalia ups the votes. The winner is... Semis! <laughs> oh my god. No! Yes! Do you guys have no shame at all? Come on, don't pretend you didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for it. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end this part right here. I'm dead. So we're the, the semis. Yaoi semis. God, good God. What a great baseball name. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. But it's really nice that we're finally getting to see Akasha's point of view. I actually want to know more about her background. Since we learned about Dia, and then Min, and their history together, and then Noelle, how she's struggling with her family, and how... Uh, she's struggling with herself personally. I want to see what Akarsha's story is going to be. So it's really cool that we get to switch around with the girls and learn uh, more about them. I really like that. And uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. Also, hit that bell button so you know when I upload the next video. And if you would like to support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. Or you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl and a game. And yeah, please let me know what you guys thought. It's so, I love this game so much. It's, re it's really great to play. It's so much fun. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Whoa! No, Atreus! What the fuck? You drag us or word or develop another character. Video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4.